what it is. Welcome back to another episode of Dropping Bombs. I'm your host, Brad Lee. Today in the studio, I have a real treat for you, Michael Sartain. Michael, welcome to the show. <laughs> I've, been, I've been thinking about this all week, about coming back on here with Brad, man. This is one of my favorite shows to do. Well, I figured since you're here yeah, that I needed to raise my intelligence level, <laughs> raise the conversation a little bit, not be so juvenile and elementary in my thinking or my interview skills. I appreciate that, man. That's great. Welcome to the show, sir. I appreciate that. Hey, hey now, just, just want to let people know, if anybody wants the most detailed interview ever of Brad Lee, go check out my channel. We did four hours last time. Yes, for those of you that may not know my guest today, Michael Sartain is host of the Michael Sartain podcast, in which he just spoke of, and founder of Men of Action, which basically has garnered attention in a wide range of fields, including broadcasting. Yep. You've... Uh, Excelled in philanthropy. Yeah. What does that mean? You've donated a lot of money. Yeah. So what we do is a lot of times uh, in order to build a social circle or a networking group, uh, uh, the best example I think of is Dan Fleischman. Model Citizen Fund is not only a huge charity that he uses in order to collect uh, items for backpacks for homeless people, orphanages, domestic abuse charities. But it's also like if you go to his you've been to his birthday party before. It's like every single celebrity you can think of MMA fighter. P. Uh, Diddy. Uh, P. Diddy. Uh, it was P. Diddy. I don't think he was. I've never seen P. Diddy there. It wasn't a P. Diddy party. It it was not a P. Diddy party, but, uh, you know, when you go there, every influencer, every female influencer, you can think of every playboy model. And so I like the idea. What I try to teach is this concept of like using philanthropy with influencers in order to raise money. Women, especially really attractive women, have a superpower that they can use. And instead of using it just to get OnlyFans subscribers, they should use it in order to, to raise money for animal rescue or And autism. it helps people. Yeah, it helps people for sure. For so, sure. so folks, all kidding aside. You know, I always mess with him because he believes we actually landed on the moon. Yes. Um, and uh, he also retired from the Air Force. Yes. And you fancy yourself or have some sort of, you know, evidence that you're of higher intelligence than most I dipshits. Don't, I don't believe that. I mean, if you believe that, or, I appreciate it. What would you do in the Air Force? Uh, oh, I... um. I did counterintelligence in the Air Force. I, I see what you're saying. No, I uh, I was a navigator on a KC-135. I was an instructor navigator on a KC-135 Strato tanker. I, did, I flew for about five years. In the last two years, I did signature management, like counterintelligence work. So it's the opposite of intelligence. It's counter. counter. Yeah. So, so for instance, consider the concept of like you leave your house to go on um, vacation. Uh, what do people do? They have someone come and pick up the newspaper. They have someone turn the lights on every once in a while, turn them off. You might have an automatic thing that does it. Someone might leave the TV on or whatever so that your neighbors or possible thieves or whatever can't tell that you're that you've gone away. Does that make sense? So that would be a counterintelligence move. We did stuff like that, except consider that for an entire air force base or an army base or something like that. You don't mm. want people to know when you're going to deploy, or you don't want people to know the deployment strength. You would use different ways of hiding those numbers. That's so, a counter Intel. So, so counter Intel is, is sh the, sh the act of shielding. Yes. From other intelligence services. C correct. Yeah. Now, when you talk about the intelligence community, mm -hmm. what are they referring to? Uh, the Intel's community is going to be everything from the uh, DIA, so that's a def, uh, the, the CIA, the the DIA. It's going to be the National SS. The what do you mean SS? Secret Service. The Secret Service is not a part of the intelligence apparatus. They're part of the Department of Finance. Does uh, there have to have an intelligence in the title to be part of the no, intelligence? No, no. It's just any. Uh, uh, National Security Advisor, I think it's everything that falls underneath him. But like we have different intelligence. So the NSA would be under the uh, an intelligence agency, the CIA, the DIA. And then you would have individual uh, military intelligence for the different branches would have their own ones. But yeah, I mean, it's it's they're all supposed to share. And the FBI also would be uh, an intelligence agency to some extent. How come you didn't go that route? Um, I just didn't want to do. I actually got in the military to do, to become an Intel officer, ironically, and then became a navigator because I, I tested really high on those skills. Uh, there's a, there's a portion when you take the AFOQT where they give you these three dimensional puzzles to solve. And I got a perf perfect score on that. So they put me in the nav pilot slot. I told them I did not want to be a pilot. It's an 11 year commitment to be a pilot. It's only seven years to be a navigator. So I did the navigator route. Um, and I really enjoyed it. It was, it was really great. But later on, it was one of these things where I knew pretty all, maybe my second year in the military, I didn't want to do 20 years. I loved being in the military. One of the greatest, probably the single greatest decision I ever made was to become an air force officer. But I, um, I will tell you, I just knew I, 
20 years was not something I wanted to do. I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to try different things. And I had learned so many skills. When you're an officer in the military, consider you're getting a continuing master's degree in leadership. That's the best way to describe it. It's like, these are the things that we can, these are what we prioritize. These are the things we get rid of. I can't always be, I can't always have my troops like me. Sometimes I'm going to have to give them u- ugly truths. I have to be able to serve them. The dichotomy of leadership that Jocko Willick talks about. Um, I need to be a leader and I need to be a follower. I talk with my sales team every week and I say, my first job is to serve you guys. Uh, my job is to make your job easier. If I'm not doing that, I'm, I never boss them around. I'm always trying to make their jobs easier. So learning those concepts, um, that's what you see. And also, I've also seen better leadership when I was in the military. I had a, a squadron commander who got fired and I just saw like them taking a lack of responsibility for what they were doing. And then you can translate that. I mean, Jocko Willick's probably the best person in the world to do that. He takes these concepts that he learned while he was a SEAL, and then he, he, he puts them into corporate structure. And that's what I try to do in my program as well. Except Jocko doesn't, you know, do have a dating component or a social media component. That's what I include. Yeah, so folks, uh, so he took his history and all of his experience, and now he's out, obviously, and he does a podcast. He's also a host of a lot of the uh you know, bikini contests yeah. and wet t-shirt contests, no, the don't nightlife, wet t-shirt, but yeah, yeah. The nightlife, nightlife stuff. Yeah. So, so, you know, if you're in Vegas or coming to Vegas, I'd reach out to him if you want to know where the hot places to go are, cause he's right in the middle of all yeah. of them and at all the top parties and all the top places, usually with beautiful women <laughs> adorning your, your arm. It is so great hearing you describe this. It's really interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, dude, you, you, everywhere you go, you got 20, 30 hotties with yeah. you. And again, hottie by normal standards. I'm somewhat of a finicky yeah. uh, connoisseur. Yeah. So like, I'll look at them and I'll be like, you know, that one, like from afar, uh-huh. she's great. Yeah. But up close, you know, yeah, for sure. Not really that hot. Yeah. And then that one, you know, hot, but like, look at the lips. Why would she do that to him? Yeah. So I'm like a prick. Tr- trying to judge your women because I don't have 20. Sure. So now I'm hating on your 20. <laughs> but no, normally if like, if you see him, dude, he's got a bunch of hot girls walking around. Um, you get invited places to bring. And by the way, yeah. they're not your girlfriends. They're yeah. friends. Right. A couple of them are your girlfriends. Right. And they're also girlfriends. Yes. So you're into, you're able to uh, teach guys how to get um, a girl that would allow you to have two? Well, that's, that's, uh, it's harder to do because you're talking about a woman who's bisexual. That's going to be like less than 10% of the population. But I do have guys often ask me for advice as far as that's concerned. That's not like one of my modules, but because, uh, all you don't know my, how you did it. My, all of my relationships are like that. That's the reason why I get asked about, well, then you should have a module. Yeah. I, I, I may consider it. I don't want the, I, so the problem is Brad, I don't want the course to become like object like objectifying women or like hardcore here's how you bang a bunch of hot chicks the thing is my clients do they do that yes but my whole thing is here's the the main problem is especially in the dating community is that there's this really bad advice that they got that men and women can't be friends and i'm just friends with tons of women now the thing is those women introduce me to other women they make me very very used to being around beautiful women so i don't act any different when i'm around it and the most important thing what you mentioned before is i get invited to everything there's a book uh, by ashley mears called very important people and she talks about parties in the Hamptons she's a she's a PhD but she goes undercover as almost like a bottle rat for like two years and when she does it she says when we're at the parties at the Hamptons it's like if you had girls with you you could get into these parties with billionaires that's how these people would network because they want girls exactly and so and so when you did that great example go watch the Wolf of Wall Street how uh you know uh he the main character meets Margot Robbie that's that's one of those Hamptons parties so it's just one of these things where I, I personally Ty Lopez is like this. If you go to Dan Fleischman's events, you'll see a better ratio of male to female. Whereas most of the time you'll see with 99% guys when you go to self-help things. And so I try to, I try to have a better ratio in everything I do now in our marketing. Yes. It's me hosting a bikini competition with 75 girls and I bikini competition is not one of the th- main things I teach. I have six different event types that I teach, but it's, it's one of these things where if you can master this, just consider if you're a real estate agent and you, you want to do some kind of open house or like some nice place. If you have more girls there than guys, people are just going to enjoy your party more. Women will enjoy your party more and men will enjoy your party more. So that's one of the things that I try to teach guys how to do is create ratio. 
But how do they get them to, fir- to go in the first place? Um, one of the things you have to do is you have to, um, there's two main avenues. One is to fix your social media. If you have social media that makes you interesting, and uh, that's one of the biggest ways to do so. We teach men the first four steps of MOA. First one is to fix your Instagram. Second one is to build a list. Usually about 2,000 female influencers you want to come to your events and maybe 200 guys that you want uh, to come. Like all the guys I want to come on my podcast are on my list. Uh, and then once you do that, the step third step is to get open threads on Instagram DM with as many girls as possible, even if they're not coming to your event. And then the fourth step is to find six female friends to go with these with you to these events. And so like I, I've, I've done this several times when Ty would have a, a speech somewhere, I would show up with like six girls or something like that. Or when Bradley or no Bradley, when uh, uh, Dan Fleischman would have an event, I would show up with a bunch of girls to his event. And the reason why it wasn't because I was trying to show off. It's just it's just more interesting. The girls have more fun. A lot of times the girls want to learn what's going on there. And then other girls will come up and talk to you. So it's a uh, but it's, it's just, also to show off. It, I mean, <laughs> It, it, it ended up being that. Yeah, it ends but up it has that. to be because why? Why else would you do it? Even though, yeah, it's more fun for me too. But well, but you're going to say, look at the influence I have. Yes, and not only that, when someone sees, because again, I mean, you you see pretty girls, but like yours, the the group you hang around almost seem look. They almost look like Playboy. Yeah. girls. Yeah, like okay. in other words, they're not just cute yeah. girls. They're like la la yeah. girls. Uh, well, the thing is, from my standpoint, it helps with the business because one of the things is a lot of guys join my, uh, at Men of Action because they they're only looking for help with dating, and then I we show them things that they're also lacking in their life, especially when it comes to body fat percentage, nutrition. When it comes to um, let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, body fat. Because mm-hmm. I know when, when I'm listening to your podcast, and guys, before I forget, Michael Sartain podcast, you can go find that. Yeah. And of course, as he's talking about, he started a group. He's the founder of Men of Action, which is basically, you know, you're you're teaching guys how to, you know, be studs and and attract women and not be so odd in yeah. in social settings. Socially calibrated, really good leaders, great communicators, and completely understanding of the opposite sex. Yeah. How come you've never had me speak there? I'm like the prime. Oh, I will. Uh, you know what? Next time we when we do summit, 100. percent But I would birthday. have to. But I would have to think because if you said, Brad, how how did you do it? Because I don't do it anymore. Yeah. I don't know, but I know that I I would assume that confidence had something to do with sure. it. Humor had something to do with it, and the fact that I'm pretty good looking had something to do with it. Because if you can teach an ugly fella how to get which a lot of girls yeah that's some shit to figure out because like dude i'd walk in sometimes and you know i would get girls coming up to me because you know they thought i was cute Mm -hmm. i mean at the end of the day they would tell me you know after you get them you know you can say well what what attracted you you know oh you're fucking gorgeous yeah and i'm like oh thanks you know but (laughs) but that's why i got them it wasn't because i said something it wasn't because of some psychological thing I did. It was just because they wanted me because they thought I was good looking. But right. You also didn't do anything to screw it up. That's the big part. In fact, that's probably more than half my well, job. In most cases, because yeah. a lot of times I did. You would screw it up. But eventually you get better. You start to learn, okay, this is where I'm screwing up. And you also probably, I'm curious if you think this, because I've had discussions with several people in my podcast about this. The highest level of sales and the highest level of talking to women have a lot of commonalities. Yes. Uh, the concept of like eliminating neediness, frame control. These are things that you do. Orrin Claff, when he wrote, writes Leading the, the witness. Exactly. When, well, Orrin Claff, when he writes uh, Pitch Anything, or if you listen to... Uh, or uh, read a hundred million dollar offer by Alex Ramosi and you take those concepts and just put them in dating. They fit one-to-one. There's a perfect correlation because it's what, um, what's it? Jordan Belfort calls it persuasion, communication, or, uh, object. Uh, I can't forget exactly the term he uses, but when you talk like that, it works in sales and it also works when talking the opposite sex, going back to what you said before about me walking in with a large group of women. One of the things that happens is a lot of people want to network with me. It really helps the business because it gets you, people you curious. Did, hold on. And I hate to interrupt you, but you talk a thousand miles an hour. Yeah. And if I don't jump in there, yeah, we're going to miss it. all kinds of good stuff. Why do they want to network with you because they think they can get some of those girls. Yes. And they do like, that's the thing. One of the, we had a, what do you mean? And they do. I did. I did a podcast where it was called uh, destroying or conquering limiting beliefs. And we go over the main limiting beliefs that guys who consider joining the program have. And the number one is uh, I'm short or I'm too old. I'm overweight. The other one is my ethnicity is not attractive to the opposite sex. So I have a lot of Indian men, a lot of uh, Asian men that will come into the, the program and they have these things. And so what I'll do is whenever I get a guy who's like, maybe he's under six feet tall and he's Indian, I'll show him 20 other Indian clients that I have that are, that are crushing it. 
And right when you on. say crushing it, do you mean in love or getting laid a lot? Uh, both. But like, we don't, we don't specifically, like the thing is when we talk about getting laid, I'm not going to go over there and say, well, this guy has a 70 lay count and this guy has a 50. I'm never going to do that. What I'll do though, is I'll say, I'll ask you a question, Brad, you've, you've seen like my show and, and the podcast or in the, in the bikini competitions. If you came out to one of those things, you being Brad Lee, would you have tr luck with women? If I brought you a place where 70 girls and 10 guys, would you have luck with women? Yes. Okay. So the thing you have to ask yourself is if you would have luck with women, if you were in the situation that I'm putting yourself in, you can question whether or not these guys do. They'll tell you they do. But the, the reality is whenever I have people say this, it's like, well, Michael, I see you have your clients and they're surrounded by women. That part's true. Can't deny that. You I have one client who's five foot one, constantly surrounded by women. He's like, but are they sleeping with all these women? And my answer to you is this. Consider if I put you in that situation, would you be sleeping with lots of women? If you wouldn't, then why are you listening to some other dating coach? And if you would, then why aren't you doing this program? Well, it's not if they would or they wouldn't. They would if they could. The right. the, what they're asking you is, are they able to hump them? Because yeah. just because you hang around yes, a bunch of hotties, correct. you could be paying them. So here's here's the next part. Like so they would they would say about Ty Lopez all yeah. the time. You know, he's just paying all those. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't have to. Ty, those girls are no, Ty dying. Gets, Ty gets chicks. Yeah, there, there's girls die. So now you you just unleash the next part of it, which is this. Um, and I, one of the, re, my favorite things, one of my good friends is Dan Bilzerian. And one of the things I love talking Dan to him gets about, chicks. yes, one of the things I love talked about Dan is like, Dan, if you were going to delineate, what are the things that cause so many women to want to go out with you? And he would say fame and jealousy were like the first two things. Remember what I said? You walk into a room with 20 girls, you don't have to do anything. The girls are then competing for your attention. Other ones that were already in there. No, no. Even girls, I've done this several times. I had 10 plutonic female friends and just attraction begins. Attraction just starts. It's manufactured. And the reason why is because of something for anybody who's skeptical of this, look up two concepts in psychology. One is called mate choice copying, which comes from evolutionary psychology and evolutionary biology. And the other one is called sexy son's hypothesis. If you look at these things, you'll find that when women see attractive qualities in another man, they want that those attractive qualities in their offspring. So they'll choose to, to mate with those men. And in some cases it's because the guy's tall, but in other cases it's because they see other women find those uh, qualities attractive. So one of the things that happens is often I'll be out with a large group of women and other women will be like, what the fuck, who the fuck is yeah, this guy with all these girls, other women, but off, often, the girls in that group will be like, why isn't he hitting on me? This is one of the biggest keys that a lot of people grasp. Dan does not hit on girls. I know people don't believe this. He doesn't. And I don't either. If you ever hear somebody saying Michael Sartain hit on my girl. No, I never, I don't. What I'll do though, is I might be out with your girlfriend and 30 other girls. And your girlfriend is like, why is he, why is he paying attention to them and not me? And there's this innate necessity for the female gender to need attention and validation from the opposite sex. And when they don't get it, cause they're used to getting it from yeah, me. Like yeah, but, but you're paying attention to them and not me means you're paying attention to some of them. Oh uh, no, I mean, but, but in a, in a more of a, like, I don't treat men and women any differently. I treat them in a, like a very plutonic way. And often before I was in the relationship I'm in now, probably 85% of the girls I slept with were just friends. They were girls that I was just friends with. But what happened was over time, it was see, just, see again, by the way, folks, the other day I make a post. I said, listen, if you're, if you're buddies, you know, you, you were, yes, you were I, I remember, we were going to react to that. You're absolutely right. Okay. So you were having sex with friends. Yes. Okay. Well then again, you just define it as a friend. Yeah. You, you, you were lovers. See, I don't, <laughs> that's really funny. You say it like that. No, we're still just friends. It's just, when we you up insert I'm, your penis. Yes. I don't know. Into their that vagina. Lovers. That makes you. Okay. Yeah. Lovers. Yeah. Now, by definition, maybe not. We weren't love. We can argue it, but you made you fucking sexual sure. partners. Okay. That's all I was saying. And everyone wanted to say, oh, no. And I think even you commented that you can be friends. Yeah. Look, dude. No, you, no. I actually agree with you. I actually think it's a problem if you're dating a woman and she has a bunch of guy friends. But, yeah. and the reason, but the reason why I think I, it's a problem is because of my own existence. Like, and, I and mine. Yes. Dude, exactly when I, when I, when I moved to Vegas, yes. I would go out. I was single. Yeah. I would go out and I would, we would get girls. Mm -hmm. And the next day I would find out those girls had boyfriends and yeah. husbands yeah, all the time. And I'm like, why wouldn't you say anything? Well, matter of fact, they denied, they said the opposite because I don't want 
to touch anybody's girl. Totally agree. I don't think it's very ethical, number one. Number two, you could end up fucking dead. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up because that is the issue. Do you remember, I don't know if you ever heard, uh, next time you have Dan Fleischman on, ask him the story about one time there was a buddy of his who had beat this guy up at a, at a restaurant and Dan went over to find him because he said, there's a bunch of guys outside trying to kill me. I need your help. Come over here. Dan Fleischman shows up. And he goes, he goes, what happened? He goes, well, I beat that guy's ass. He's knocked out in the front and I beat his ass. Uh, and, and dad goes, what did you do? He goes, well, I slept with his girlfriend. And then, and, and Dan's like, okay, listen, I don't know what's going on here, but let's sneak out through the back. And the guy goes, no, 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 we're going to go out there. I'm not afraid of these dudes. And I'm like, and Dan goes, you knocked him out and you fucked his girlfriend. What are you doing? Let's go out the back, bro. Like you already got the W. This is crazy. And that's something I think a lot of people don't understand. It just takes one nut with a gun or a fucking billy club or something who knows where you live. I, what do you mean? It's easy to find any, anybody's home address. Hey, that's exactly my point. It's like these guys, I, I tell people all the time, rule number six in men of action is nobody needs to know how much money you make or who you're fucking. And that, that comes from like Biggie Smalls. If you listen to the 10 crack amendments, I just don't need people. I never try to dunk on anybody because you know, never know. And the other thing is when you date, when you start dealing with more and more attractive women, every one of those attractive women, there's a guy who thinks he owns her still, even if she's done with him, even if it's an ex from way back. And it could be a psycho. And it could be a psycho. And, and, and often it is. And, and so that's the issue. Yeah. And, and now you innocently interact. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, now that psycho's on your ass. Yeah. You, so, okay. so it, it would just be my humble advice to people. Don't, fuck with chicks that have dudes yes and and chicks don't fuck with dudes that have chicks yeah like there's enough single people in the world y'all don't exactly have right. to fucking worry about the, that the problem though with women though is one of the key components to their attraction is they're is, with somebody is seeing that their other women find that man attractive so consider you and i see a beautiful woman if we see someone in less than one tenth of a second we can determine she's beautiful that's an evolutionary adaptation that homo sapiens have had for two hundred thousand years what happens for women though is they'll look at us and they'll be like i don't know if he has a micro penis if he's bad in bed i don't know if he's going to stalk me i don't know if he's going to physically abuse me i don't know if he's broke i don't know if he has you know all these different things but she sees that same man and he's surrounded by 10 women Let's go back to what we said before. A lot of those questions in her mind are answered. Even on a subconscious level, they're answered. Does that make sense? Like if almost, and I always hear you talking statistics on your, on yeah. your content. When you say, I don't know if they have a micro penis, what's the statistic? Someone has a micro penis. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's got it's, to be very, very, yeah, very, very, very small. Micro, no pun intended. Micro penis. So small enough to where she wouldn't be happy with it. Well, again, what's the statistics? I'm I sure you no, know. I, you I have know. to know I think the average that. in North America is a four inch penis. I, I fucking don't know. I don't know how many have a micro penis. I've never But what's average? I believe the average is four. I believe the average is four. No, no, no. Not the size. Four, four inches. What's, what's. When you say the average, does that mean one out of every two men? That's average. No, average would be the 50th percentile. Like, or that's if you one look at two. the median, I think it's probably four inches or something like that. But that's yeah. one out of two. Yeah. That means half of the men in no, the no, world no, have no. a four what, inch what, or what, smaller what, penis. So you want to get really, then, dude, I'm King Kong. Yeah, you want to get really technical. What that would mean is the middle standard deviation, meaning 63, 68.27% would be within one standard deviation of four inches. That's actually what it means. It doesn't mean that half of them are at four inches. So do women really walk around thinking, I wonder if he's got a small dick or a big dick? No, but I think what, what women do, so so as men, we look at a woman and it can immediately tell whether we would sleep with her. I think women look at men and they can tell whether or not well, they wouldn't sleep with him. Well, can I interject here? Yeah. Because again, you 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 go from point to point to point to point I to apologize. point. Let's do four hours. Well, well, no, I just want to interject because yeah. this is going to educate people. Yeah. What did you just say? I said, for men, we can tell very quickly if we would sleep with a yes, woman. Yes, now. Well, for women, they can tell very quickly if they wouldn't sleep with us. Okay, well, again, yeah. in that case, when a guy looks at a chick, if they've got a vagina, mm -hmm. depending on who will find out, will determine whether or not he will have sex with her. For sure. I don't care what someone says. You know, I only sleep with hot chicks. Bullshit. You'll, it depends on the, the moment, but yeah. you'll bang damn near anything depending on who would find out yeah. or not. So again, no one will find out that you whack that real quick and you know you, you want to whack that real quick, you'll do it. And a guy don't yeah. take a lot to fuck. Correct. A woman wants to have some sort of connection. Mm -hmm. Not all of them. Some of them are just, you know, they're horny as dudes are. But some of them, they want a connection, an yeah. emotional connection. That's why... 
that's the case. But women can see you and tell you if they would physically be attracted to you just as quickly but as they, a guy. That doesn't mean they're going to have sex with you. No. That, yes. But you they can have, tell you. But they can also tell you if they're not, never going to have sex with you. I think they, just that's visually? They, well, just over the first instinct that they get from talking to a guy. When I talk to women, they're like, I don't know if I'm going to sleep with the guy very quickly, but I know when I'm not going to sleep with the guy. And so I think it's very different. And because what women, they say it is? Women, women, need, women, when they look at men, have imperfect information. They don't know if he has the attributes that she's going to find attractive because women care more about a man's status and ability to acquire resources than the other way around. Whereas when we look at women, we see a hip to waist ratio, size of breasts, facial symmetry, and signs of youth. So our information, we get perfect, perfect information immediately. And that's why it's different. Going back to what you said, there's a seduction process for men and women. For men, the seduction process only includes one thing, which is attraction. If we are attracted to a woman and that we would have sex with her behind a dumpster. Now, I know a lot of women are listening to this and guys are going to be in the comments like, no, no, I would never do that. Whatever, oh, bro. She, they're not going to be kind like, of whoever's saying that. Listen, bro, the girls are not going to sleep with you because you leave a fucking comment on Brad's thing. Stop being a simp. Okay. Obviously that is true. The second part though is, um, is women have their seduction process includes comfort and attraction. That's why it's very, very different. Women will say often, I want a man to bring me flowers. No, you want a man you're attracted to to bring you flowers. If a homeless person came up on the street and brought you flowers, your vagina is not going to go wet, wet for him. That's you're not. And so w women often, when you ask them what they find attractive, they describe what they find comfortable. The dad bod. No, women do not prefer dad bods. It's not true. When you ask women, who would you rather have a short term sexual uh, fling with and they show different body types? It is the male stripper physique. That's the one they're looking for. So it's like the, the, the studies are in on this. But women will say this stuff. Also, the, the thing about men being medium ugly, stuff like that. The Why? Other thing, Why, though? What do you mean? Why do they prefer long term with with the little dad bod, but short term with a, with it, a it's chip something, and dale? It's, not, it's something they prefer. They found a man that they so notice whenever they talk about the dad bod, it's always like Vince Vaughn or Seth Rogen or it's Elon Musk or it's fucking uh, some women think the dad bod is Jason Momoa. What they're doing is they're looking at men who are already extremely high status. So they're already attracted and they're saying, what would make it more likely for him to stick with me during the pregnancy? When, when women get pregnant, men often produce a, got a lot of prolactin and you see men will often gain weight when their wives get pregnant. What they're looking at is the sign, the evolutionary sign that the man is going to stay with them. And as he gets more and heavier, it's less likely that he's going to go out and cheat. That makes her feel more comfortable. So what she's describing is something that makes her feel comfortable, but she's describing it as it is an attraction cue and it is not an attraction cue. And so I think that's what the difference is for men. We're not confused because we know if you tell a man, hey, what do you like? He's like, well, I like brunettes with green eyes, whatever. And if you look at his his search history, you're going to find brunettes with green eyes. They're, men are very clear on what they're attracted to. Women often will state they're attracted to something when what they're really stating is what they're comfortable with. But there's one other thing uh, you brought up earlier, and I want to bring this up. If you were to if you, do this sometimes, if you do a panel show, you have 10 beautiful women on there, and you ask them, how did you meet the last few guys that you dated? None of them are going to say, uh, almost none of them are going to say, I met him on Tinder. Maybe one out of the 10 was said, I met him on Tinder. The rest of them, very few of them are going to say, I was walking through a mall and a guy came up and just approached me out of the blue, like daytime, uh, day game, cold approach. What most of them are going to say is, I met him on social media and or we connected through a friend and more times than not that friend is female so if beautiful women are telling you that they're sleeping with men that they meet through other beautiful women what is the best way for you to meet beautiful women the Get answer beautiful is women to have a, a bunch of beautiful women around you the conclusion is inescapable and yet dating as dating advice for the last 20 years has been that men and women can't be friends this is the, one of the problems this is the reason why the bottom third of men are getting no sex now there's, and there's a, the top five percent of men i think 10 or 15 years ago the top five percent of men had 35 sexual partners and now it's 60 so if women are having the same amount of sex but men the bottom third are having none and the top five percent are having more what does that tell you it means that things are being those men at the top are, are are the ones sleeping with those women that normally would have been with those men at the bottom those women or those men at the bottom and so when you see that because women are having the same amount of sex so if you see that concept, then it should make you understand that what's happening is social media has stratified so that a small group of men are having a ton of success, which means you have to be on social media. You just have to. If you don't, and unless you are, listen, if you have won an NBA championship, you're a billionaire. If you're a billionaire, you don't need an Instagram. If you are, um, you know, incredibly famous, you've won an Academy Award, you don't need an Instagram. For the rest of you normal fucks out there that are listening to this, you do. And you can keep telling me that I'm wrong, but if you look at the most beautiful, like, again, don't ask me. 
Ask the most beautiful women you know how they met their partner, and they're going to tell you a friend introduced me or I met him on social media. And if you see that, then why aren't you doing that? If you do, uh, you, you talk to your sales team all the time. If you're getting a bunch, if you A, B test a bunch of different ads and one of them's crushing it, you put more money into that ad. I don't understand how that concept makes sense when it comes to sales, but it doesn't seem to make sense when it comes to dating. If you just ask women when they sleep with someone, how they met them, they're going to give you the same answer. And that answer is the thing I teach in my program. Hmm. Well, again, if any dudes listening, trying to get, uh, into the dating scene, then yeah. it sounds like you need to be a man of action. <laughs> so join men of action. Yeah. But I could talk a while on these subjects only because it's number one, interesting, but, but number two, I've got my opinions because of my experience. Of course. Now I'll say things I did a post on social media once where I told a story about how I met this girl once. And I thought I came up with the best pickup line on planet earth. I don't know if I told you this. I may have it. I put it on social media or my team did. And literally it went ridiculously viral on Facebook of all places. I don't like Facebook. All the comments on Facebook seem to be real left leaning and real blue haired type people. Yeah. And I, I don't get how, you know, like, why would you like Instagram, but you wouldn't want Facebook and TikTok and Instagram? Like, it's all, to me, it's just social media. Like, the same people have all the accounts, but it, apparently it, not. It's because Instagram is more status-based, and a lot of those people feel left behind, and that's why they end up left-leaning. Like, and, again, and, it's, it's, and, it's, and sour. It's, it's, the, it's the feminist... They seem uh, sour on Facebook. It's the Facebook. feminist PhD. She's not going to do well on Instagram, but on Facebook, she can start a group and she can get a bunch of people. So that's, that's part of the reason. And why. it's not the girls that were doing most of the hating. Oh, it was gosh. the dudes, oh, dude. And I, I kept looking believe. at like these dudes like, bro, first of all, the line wasn't that fucking slick. And number two, why is it cap? Yeah. Like, it, I, I'm going to tell the story real quick. Yeah. I'm at a dealership. Yeah. And by the way, there's, it went so viral that people were sending me videos of other people trying to do it <laughs> saying this is where you got that no they got that from me because again dude i made this shit up on the spot i don't remember the year let's call it 2004 yeah i'm running a car dealership someone comes up i have a sales team and i'm the king obviously at the dealership because yeah. you know i'm the alpha king of the sales guys there so they all you know we all hang out and bro it out and shit and someone comes up and they go dude there's a freaking hot ass girl that just pulled into the service drive and i said well i'll be the judge of that so i roll <laughs> over there and sure enough there's a hot chick there i ask her out i'm gonna tell it quick i ask her out she says no and i'm like okay bummer you know i turn around to walk out and my team's watching and there then one of them made a comment that basically said oh i thought you could get anybody i thought you were the closer so i'm like fuck i'll give it one more shot so i turn around and all i said to her is i said hey let me ask you and i didn't think this is what i'm gonna do i just said let me ask you a question yeah what'd you have for dinner last night and she said pasta and i said what'd you have the night before and she said chicken and i said why didn't you have pasta and she said why would i have pasta every night and I said, exactly. Call me when you're tired of pasta. And I gave her my card and she knew what I was intend referring to. She told me that she was in a relationship, but I didn't know the guy. And that's another reason a lot of guys were hammering me. Yeah. Fucking had a, bo had a boyfriend. Yeah, but I don't know him. Yeah. And he's a boyfriend. Boyfriend and husband are two different things. Someone says, hey, I got a boyfriend. I'm not interested. I say, cool. Sorry. I walk away. This one, like... I thought I wanted to marry. Yeah. That's how fucking hot she was. So I'm like, he ain't invited type of thing. Like let's, let's talk. But anyway, long story short, I said, okay, call me if you ever get tired of pasta. And, and she called me three days later. Yeah. Tired of pasta. turns out this dude is a multi multi millionaire. If I told you who he was, you might know him. Yeah. And I'm thinking there's no way I'm getting this dude. Cause he is loaded. And I don't know if I got her from him or he discarded her and she came to me. Could be, yeah. Because in my mind, I'm still not discrediting this guy. Yeah. He probably f discarded her and I thought I took her. Yeah. I didn't take shit. He was done with it. So again, to me, that's the kind of power I give to the guy with the billions. Because you said you're a billionaire. You don't need an Instagram. If you're yeah. a billionaire, I don't think you need shit. Yes. But I also don't know if that's the quality of girl you're, you should be looking for. If they all they want you for is your money, all they want you for. I didn't say if they want you for money because I think that's smart of a girl. Yeah. If, if my daughter said, Dad, who should I choose? 
I would say choose someone with money. Why? Not because I'm a, a, a bias against people that don't, because I don't want her to have a hard life. Exactly. But anyway, I don't even know where I was going with that. Now I'm starting to emulate you. Yeah. So you started, you were talking, the, the, telling the story and you said you got a bunch of haters on there, like yes. male haters. Yeah. They said I was lying. They said I'm cap. And it's like, come on, man. Like, that's not bullshit. And then when I came down here one time and these are lines, I came yeah. down here one time and I didn't have any fucking money per se. And you know, my buddy was like, you know, cause I, I've always been known as the guy that, you know, I could make calls after this and let you talk to some of my buddies back in the day. And yeah. like, dude, I was, I was freaking. I was men of action I, back I'm, then. I'm familiar with that guy, yeah. And so, and so, like, everyone would come to me to get the girls, even if we were out. Like, Brad, go go talk to them, you know? And I'd go up, and I'd bring them over, and sure. I'd be the best freaking draw ever. Anyway, this guy says, you know, go get that table. We're watching this table. Dude, they've shot down multiple yeah. sets. And I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure, but I'm willing to give it a try. I said, I don't have any money. He goes, here, use my card. So I walk up with American Express his and I said and I didn't know I was going to say this yeah. and I said I'll tell you what I said I'll buy all the drinks if you guys promise not to hog all the covers and I gave him a little shitty ass grin yeah. and I threw the fucking card on the table and it worked <laughs> so why am I saying all that because I came up with some cheesy lines and cheesy lines actually worked yeah do you think they work on a normal basis no i think they do but they're just less efficient it's the difference between like scaling your business to where you have like a direct to cart business with a vsl and you 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 have a marketing budget of like fifty thousand dollars a day versus doing door-to-door -door sales i think that's the difference i do think the lines work absolutely going up and talking to women is actually a skill set that i think a lot of people are missing and i and so what, what i do i have eight what are called immersion weeks in las vegas where um it's usually the last week of the month um for eight months we have guys come in here and they have to do 50 cold approaches per day every night that they go out who holds them accountable uh, the coaches i have several coaches that go out there with them and then they have to film also some of the interactions they have with the girls they, they put it on camera they do these selfie videos and in doing so i'm trying to get them over that hurdle of the of the fear of talking to people the problem is i just feel like the pickup community over the last 20 years has really overemphasized how necessary that is and de-emphasize how necessary it is to network with other people there, there's nothing in the world easier than to go up and talk to a beautiful woman when you have a beautiful woman brad when you have a beautiful woman with you and even if she's just your friend i'm friends with lindsey palas um lindsey is not we are not dating there's nothing going on i say the same thing with abigail ratchford emily sears whatever uh, uh caitlin runk all these different girls that i'm friends with kindly myers when i go out with them if i'm with them and go talk to a beautiful woman the girl looks at me and then looks at her and looks at me and it's just like it's very clear that there was a pattern interrupt she's used to men she's not attracted to coming up and talking to her and sort of asking for her permission and hitting on her, giving her validation that she did nothing to earn. I come up and I'm like, and I talk to her like she's a normal human and I'm with a girl who's prettier than her. The, it is a massive pattern interrupt for her and she's not used to it. And it starts this, this cycle of like curiosity. It's like, wait a second, how does he know this girl? This girl seems to really like him. They seem to be really cool. What's going on? Like, and now none of the other guys compare. But, none of them are interesting. But why do you want that one if you're already with one that's hotter? No, no, no. In this case, I'm talking about a girl you're just plutonic friends with that you use as a wing woman. No, I know. But like, yeah. why don't you just get the woman, get the friend? You, you could. Why, By the way, why would you, why here, would you downgrade and here, get here's, the one that, here's the, the, here's one the irony. you're with her? Here's the irony, Brad. I've had girls that were really beautiful that were wing girls for me who eventually started catching feelings because they were confused why I was hitting on other girls, but not them. And that's the thing that happens. It's a very, if you, you've had Jeremy Miner on here, you know, he has the, the sales technique where it's like, he's, he's always frame control and he's like kind of walking away when he's doing stuff and he's there's very, very low pressure. That's the same kind of situation here. It's like, Hey, I'm, I'm with two beautiful women. We're going to go to a party. You can come if you want. And while I'm walking off and the girl is like way more interested in that than the guy who comes up and it's like, you're so beautiful. Let me take you out to dinner. Let me do you all this. She he's, that same woman's walk, watching me walk away with two beautiful women is like, what's going on there? There's this, conf there's this mystery, this confusion. Like, why is that happening? And in my case, let's just say I just started in Men of Action and I'm not dating either one of these girls. We're just friends. It still works. This is a, a thing a lot of people have an issue with. They're like, yeah, it won't work because you're not sleeping with those girls. That's not true at all. It absolutely works. And if you talk to the guys who I see do the best with women and you ask them, they're like, yeah, I'm always just surrounded by girls. I'm always, you talk to a guy, maybe he managed a strip club or he was the lead, uh, the GM of, of, a, of a nightclub where there's like 40 or 50 cocktail servers. You're just going to find that these guys, because they're comfortable being around women all the time, 
the women are competing for his attention and because they're competing for his attention it causes them to become attracted it's the florence nightingale effect the more invested they become in the guy the more they become attracted and so these are all concepts from evolution these are all concepts from psychology that we use in our program and they work and they work for guys who are short and they work for guys who are indian and they work for guys who are 55 years old and when they keep working for those guys people will is come 55 up. a detriment no I, I think for you and me 55 is fine i think for you're not 55 no i'm 40 46 but but I think because we're in good shape and be also because you, you understand most of the people you went to high school with don't have the social media presence that you do. Right. Right. You're relevant. You're married and I'm in a relationship, but if we were single, we would not have that much trouble meeting women. You and I would not because of the fact that we have the social media. Presence I would use social have. media. Exactly. Exactly. Like, dude, I, I mean, if, if me and my wife were to divorce, yeah. I would put it on social media. Yeah. I would say, Guys, even even like the ones that are doing it right end up screwing it up. And unfortunately, my wife and I have decided to call it quits. You know, it's unbelievable. And then DMs start going. By the way, your wife is awesome. And that would never happen. And I know she was upset at me the last time I came on the show. Yeah, uh, she 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 likes you. She just doesn't want me around you. Yeah. So that's the other issue, right? A lot she's of guys like you're not going to the <laughs> contest. <laughs> Here's one of the funny things. Women love being friends with me because when they were friends with me, they meet other women that they can network with. And they also there's a lot of high status guys that are with me. And a lot of my female friends meet their boyfriends through me. Guys like to hang out with me because for the obvious reason because I'm surrounded by a lot of women. But here's the funny thing. Guys do not want their girlfriends to be friends with me and girls do not want their boyfriends to be friends with me. Why? Exactly. Because they don't want their boyfriends to be friends with me because if you're friends with me, then you will, uh, you'll you have access to all these other women. Well, yeah, that I can see. Yeah. So but that, why, why wouldn't your friend, your guy friends want their women around you? Because, because they know that they're going to be around a bunch of other high status dudes. A, a great example would be like, I have access to when Dan Bilzerian would throw a party, it was 300 guys and 2,100 girls, right? That's about the, what, what would happen. If I went there with your girlfriend, that's not Yeah, really but my girlfriend wouldn't be going with that, you. But you'd, sh you'd be shocked how many girls that had boyfriends went to those parties. And I wouldn't, they wouldn't be my girlfriend no, anymore. Agreed. So you're a high status guy who has options. You understand most men are not in your position. If so I, if I tell you, I that, feel bad for those guys. If I tell you like it, it, the bottom third of men do not get to participate in short term dating or hookup culture, unless you do what I'm teaching, which is use pre-selection. We call it mate choice copying or pre-selection in order to, to generate attraction for women. You're just not going to, even compete. if you're ugly, I'm specifically talking about ugly men. Yeah. Nobody stands up for ugly men. Cause money, money, that'll do it. I've seen a lot of for short, sure. ugly people, but you also know, getting hot chicks you know, because they're rich. But you know, rich people who do terrible with women also, because they don't know what they're doing. It is a combination I, I, of several things. I know, but I mean, there's guys that are not that great looking at all, yeah. and they're short, but they're rich, and they get some smokers. They absolutely but but do. to me, dude, the smokers are with them because they got money. Period. But, right. It's but, not their height. But, it's but, not their looks. It's not because they did the takeaway. Because what you call yeah. pre-selection, I call the takeaway. Yeah. I'll bet you if you talk to those guys and they, they use money or whatever to get the first hot girl, I'll bet you if you ask them, did other attractive women start to notice you when you were dating an attractive woman? They'll all tell you yes. Hmm. When I, my, my girlfriend, obviously she's very attractive. When I post started posting pictures from her, I just noticed a lot more women liking my photos, following me. And it was well, maybe because they're, you're trustable now. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm obtainable now. That's the other issue. It's like the, the straight up complete and total fuck boy is not attainable. But like because what I'm is, by the way, what is a fuck boy? Because oh. I keep hearing that term yeah. and I'm too old to understand. No yeah. one called it a fuck boy. What is a is a fuck boy being is a is that a compliment? No. So a fuck boy means specifically there's two, uh, several definitions, but one of the main definitions would be it, it's a guy who sleeps with a lot of women and does not tell those women he's sleeping with other women. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, that, in my day, that was called a cheater or a player right, or a player. Right. But you can, you can be a, a player and you can still date multiple women if you tell them you're dating multiple women. So I wouldn't consider Why would like, you tell them, huh? Well, sometimes women want to know, you see the whole thing that happened with, uh, Andrew Huberman. He didn't tell those six women he was dating about the other women. Well, when I moved here in 1991, I yeah. came from Seattle Yeah, and Seattle, I had f probably five to six beauties. They never asked. 
And I never told. Because they never asked, that's fine. But if you were sitting there telling each one of them that you're engaged to them, or you're telling no, each one of them cheater. that they're, that's exactly, that's that, cheater. Would be, that would be a fuck boy. That would be a girl who's like dating a, a, a Vegas DJ or VIP host and thinking that she's the only one and then finding out that he's talking to nine other girls and not telling her about it. She, so that is not a compliment. She would call him a fuck boy. Um, I and mean, that is not a compliment. Well, I don't think it's a compliment. No, it's probably not a compliment. And I don't think it applies. Because to me, like if I'm a, when I heard the word fuck boy, it was like almost like a compliment compliment like girls just see you and want to fuck you you're yes. just a f and, and by the way i don't want to marry you i don't want to freaking spend a long time with you i just want to fuck you well yeah. to me that's kind of a compliment like yeah it is and, and to women they're like oh you just slept with all those women that means you're cheap and easy and like i listen to guys and I'm like that doesn't sound horrible to me at all like i don't really get it i went out sometimes i get this question it's like michael what do you think about all the like the meaningless sex that you had you know in your 20s or whatever and i was like none of it was meaningless to me like the next the next meaningless threesome i have will be the first one i have none of it was meaningless i thought all of it was great but also being in a relationship with a woman i love is also great both of those things are great well it's and, like i always say dude the worst blowjob i ever got was wonderful <laughs> exactly exactly that's a that's a great way to put it man yeah dude uh, you're gonna end up you know helping somebody also i think you know avoid suicide yes this is a big thing we deal, we deal with deal because there's that. a lot of guys that like they might be turning to you as the last ditch because because women <laughs> are literally causing them to be so fucking depressed yeah and out of it that their mindset just spirals down until unfortunately they're no longer wanting to be around. If you are over the age of 40 and divorced, the likelihood and your man, the likelihood of you committing suicide in comparison to the average population is eight times greater, eight times greater of you taking your own life. Men who are doing this frequently. I do one-on-ones. I do. What's the likelihood if you have a micro penis? I have no idea. I don't know. A hundred. A hundred. <laughs> All right. So the thing about it is, um, because I do one-on-one calls and I have group calls often in my one-on-one calls, I'll turn the recording off and more than a dozen or two dozen times I've had guys say, I was th thinking about taking my life before I started doing this program. Uh, if you look just at suicide in general, men are more likely to commit suicide. Um, attempting suicide, men and women are the same, but co actually committing suicide because men choose firearms and they choose you know, ropes and they choose different things like that, that get jumping off balconies, those things get the job done. Women often choose slitting wrists and, and taking sleeping pills. And often those, those things don't end up in death. That's the reason why men often commit suicide more men suffer from depression at a great rate when after they've been divorced and 70% of divorces are initiated by women. And so we also have a 56% divorce rate in this country. And so those kind 56? of things, yeah, it's about 56 in total uh, for second marriage. I think it's like 63% for third marriage. It's like 72, 71%. So if you get married your third time, it's more than likely going to end. And anytime you get married, it's more likely going to end. In fact, so in, like I'm, uh, if I've been married twice, it's more likely to end than my first one. Because I think you understand the process of divorce easier. So yeah, it, it would statistically well, that's correct. By well, the way, my girlfriend's 24 years younger than me. There's a 178% chance, increased chance that we wouldn't make it in a marriage because she's tw more than 20 years younger than me. There's all kinds of stats that go to this. It doesn't do mean you ever plan on by. being married. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to get married someday. I think so. Yeah. Do you care if that chicks had 55 hammers? Um, so again, there's another study that came out, the IFS body uh, count. Yeah. The body count one, this one got me in a lot of fucking trouble. So basically, and by the way, the same thing goes for men. So don't you, any ladies don't come at me, but the, and when it comes to women, there's two, one, uh, Jordan Peterson did, did his Institute did a study where showed if a woman had more than 20 sexual partners, she had a 17% chance of being happy in a marriage. And a second study that showed, oh, they, they surveyed 8,000 women and they, they asked them which one of they're all married. And they said, which one of you cheated and didn't cheat. It was anonymous. 30% of the women admitted to cheating. Those women had 230% more sexual partners before they were married than the women who didn't cheat. So the women who did cheat, it was around nine. The women who did cheat, it was like 3.1 or something so like that. So what's that tell us? That tells us that there's a correlation between women having a lot of sexual partners before marriage and her cheating on you. Maybe because they've had a lot of dick and, and they know yours isn't sufficient. Uh, may, may, it could be that, but it also, if you want to get really scientific, it could, there's an oxytocin release that when women have sex with men and that starts to lessen, possibly, again, this is theoretical, it starts to lessen over time, meaning the attachment the that same you have. same same way. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that could be it too. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, to, to me, like when I hear that stat, I'm thinking, okay, so 
obviously I'd want one with lower body count then. Why? Yeah. Cause I don't want them cheating. Yeah. But, but I don't know if I believe all that when, shit. When of course people, you believe we landed on the moon. When, too. <laughs> when people are virgins and get married, it's like a 75% chance they're going to make it. When people are, when people, uh, I, Is I that saw right? someone, yeah. It's I'll like, be damned. Yeah. And then there's another one that goes, and I think even both, if you, both if, parties, yeah, both parties. I think if you, I think if you're both have one body beforehand, I think it's still in the 70 percentile. Again, these are not exact. Uh, this What's your exact body size. count, Michael? Huh? Uh, that's yeah, that's, I don't know. I'm a man of God. I don't know. Can't answer that one. <laughs> Do you think it would hurt your future prospects? I think it, it would help and hurt depending on which prospects we're talking about. I think some women don't care. And then some women would probably have an issue with it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know, that's honest. Yeah. I don't know. I can't think of them all. Right. I know I would forget some. Yeah. And I can't even think of them all. So I would like, I don't know, but I do know that if my, if someone said, Hey, your wife used to get passed around like a, I don't think it would bother me as much if, if I didn't know about it, but if I, as soon as I knew about it, I would feel stupid being with her. Why? Well, because all those other dudes didn't want her and your dumb ass did. So the issue there is you wouldn't know. And when you and I were growing up, a girl could do that and you wouldn't know. The problem is that it's not the case anymore. People tag each other in their photos, man. It's really hard. If a woman has several relationships with other with several men, it's like when you see a woman consistently on a yacht in Biscayne Bay, and then the next week she's in Dubai, and then the next week she's in Ibiza, you're going to guess that she's not the one paying for those trips. Like the, there's a digital footprint that exists now, now that they, didn't exist. And if someone's paying for your trip, you're more than likely banging them. There's, there's a high probability what of if that. they're or just friends or, or, or if you're on a regular basis going to Ibiza, there's a high probability you're banging someone. What if there's just, what if they're it, just, it friends? could be, but we're talking statistics here. We don't know specific on an individual basis. But the thing is, by the way, before, again, I know I'm going to catch flack for this men who have more sexual partners before they get married are also likely to more likely to cheat. So I want to cover that. Men before who you have yell. more sexual partners are also more likely to cheat. Yeah. If they have more sexual partners before they're married, I think it's for a different reason. Again, this is just my hypothesis. I think men who have more sexual partners before they're married know how to get more sexual partners. Well, let's get, let's get some sound bites, meaning, okay. meaning these are the clips that my team hopefully will post Yeah, and clip because you know, they can't clip the whole show. People got to go watch the whole show. Yeah. But I want some, I want some sound bites only to, to play this game basically. Yeah. You asked me a question because I think I'm a good dude. Yeah. Now I didn't always be one, but I do think I am one now. And that's why I told you, I told you on your show, bro. Number one, I'm not interested in 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 orgies and shit yes i don't want to be at a sexual party yeah in other words call me weird you all guys want i don't want i don't want other dudes in the room i totally agree with that well that's what i'm talking about i don't i don't want no, <laughs> that's what I'm, talking about. no, no I'm saying what i'm saying is like i've i if it's four women in a room with one guy that's also an orgy i don't really want that. that's okay though. no like, i don't I, really I, want that yeah. either because again dude I, I i felt a little uh overwhelmed by that okay now if you saw how when you had a threesome yeah i mean yeah. It's, in other words it was almost like i, I want to focus on one what, what do you do with the other ones when you're doing one correctly <laughs> right what do you do with these other ones oh you're asking well again i mean like that this, people say well, why wouldn't you want a, a big threesome or tensome or orgy yeah. i call it orgy i don't want more than one why because I'm focused on one. I, I don't know if I can focus on four. Sure. I don't know if I can focus on two. Now, again, I think I might get away with two, but not three. Like, I'm only good for one, maybe two. Yeah. The third one's going to be left out. Well, that's why they're all they're, they're all friends with each other, too. Yeah, but sometimes they're going to want the D. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know this is where we're going. In well, the that's show what today. they want. Yeah. Right? They're, they're in there with you because you're the yeah. one with the tool. Yeah. Right now, they don't need it; they want it. Dude. Yeah, o- often, so, often though, they're also attracted to each other. Well, then why would they let you in there? Because they're attracted to me and each other. They're oh. just attracted to multiple. Well, people. anyway, I'm not a big sex party guy. Yeah, me neither. So I think I'm a good dude. I think I have good, solid ethics. Mm-hmm. What are some of the things statistically that most guys will do? I want to see if I will do them, like cheating. 
what's the statistics on a guy that will cheat? Uh, like, how many people do you think actually cheat? Gosh, I mean, I, I've seen. So uh, you definitely need to have Mac and Murphy on when he comes uh, to Vegas. He's uh, he's I believe he's a PhD candidate studying the uh, cheating. He specifically goes over cheating, and men cheat more than women. The stats I've seen are different. I've seen one where it's thirty percent men and eighteen percent women. I've seen another one where it's like it's like twenty percent men and twelve. That's not women. too bad then. Yeah, so it's about that. But women are catching up to men. I've seen other people that are like, no, what's happening is even in these anonymous surveys, women are cheating, but they don't consider it cheating because often, some oftentimes women have men that don't count. We as men don't really have women that don't count. We, we think of like, yeah, I slept with that girl. Often, the only thing that doesn't count for a dude is a massage. Right, right. But for women, oftentimes that one time they had sex with Chris Brown in the back, uh, backstage at a concert, that doesn't count on her body count. She's never going to tell her husband about that. And so because often women have women will underreport the number of sexual partners that they have because society judges them for it. I, I understand why they do it, but because that happens, you'll have these number. Th there are certain people, uh, Sadia Khan is one of them who believes that women actually cheat more than men. I'm and not, a, it's not about men versus women, men. I'm not interested in you. They can cheat all they want. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. Women, which I'm interested in. Yeah are the ones I'm concerned with. So if, if I were to be single, I would be wondering what, what, if I pick a girl, what's the likelihood that she's going to cheat again? Uh, w when they do the study on women who cheat versus women who don't cheat, women who cheat have 230% more sexual partners on average than women who don't cheat in the, in the last the, I believe it was the GSS that did the survey. And then the Peterson survey, it was when women had more than 20 sexual partners, it was a 17% chance that she would be happy in a relationship, which makes sense. I mean, it's just, if you have more that, sexual partners, well, that means if you pick a girl with a high body count, you're you're more than likely it not going to work out. It would tend to it would tend to mean that yes. And by the way, let me say something else. If you want to be with a girl with a high body count, I'm not telling you not to do it, but I do think people should be aware of these statistics. There's a difference between normative and descriptive. What I'm doing for you is descriptive. I'm not telling you how to live your life. Well, I can tell you this: you're never going to know anyway. Right. Nobody, nobody has a counter so, on their forehead. So this is what I, this is what I tell people instead. I, I do not rate women based on their physical attractiveness. I base them on the level of stimulus they receive. Meaning the 10 who lives in Iowa, who's studying to become a surgical nurse, she's physically, incredibly physically attractive. Her stimulus is that she works and comes home and goes to the gym and that's it. But the, the six who she, she docs, doctors her face on face up and face tune to make herself look more attractive and is consistently get invited to go to Dubai, get invited to go to Ibiza, invited to go to Burning Man or Coachella, that girl who's at Miami swim week, she is going to be much more difficult to date, even though she's less attractive because she received more stimulus. So what I would tell guys is, yeah, you're never going to actually know the body count. What I would do is how much stimulus does this woman need in order to feel validated? If it's a lot of stimulus, then get ready because that means champagne poppy Drake is going to sneak. If he sneaks into or DMs, she's going to respond. There's a, a, a guy you should also should have on if he comes here named Austin Dunham and men pay him to message their girlfriends to see if those women will cheat. Why him? Because he's a really good looking guy. Yeah. You know, I, I was going to start something a long time ago called yeah. the handsomely done detective Do agency. I would love to, I would love to see I, Brad, they I pay Brad Lee to sneak it. Well, it's too into late. DMs. I'm 55. Number one, number two, I'm married. So I can't have your woman, have your wife what, write the messages. That sounds like a business uh, proposition right there. No, because then, dude, believe it or not, it'll get spun out of control. There'll yeah. be people out to kill me because I'm a dirt ball because I Agreed. hit You're on right. their girl. You're right. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, I want to, I, I want to. Um, By the way, I love, I love the idea of men. I, I know it sounds very juvenile. The idea of men, if you're with a girl and you're confused, finding a guy or even a fake profile of a guy who's incredibly good looking, messaging your girl and see how far he can take it with her. That is, I'm sorry, man. That's a, it's a, it's called loyalty test. And I know it sounds, comes off as insecure. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But it just, it, it seems pretty smart to me. People do it all the time. You see companies where it's wise. The, you'll see companies where uh, before where they'll have other people come and all, make offers, uh, you know, to, to try to steal away your employees. And you're just waiting to see, is your employee going to come to you or is your employee going to leave? If your employee's going to leave, he needs to leave anyway. That's good for you. Right. I've always said this. Anytime a woman cheats on you, she's doing you a favor. If you leave. If you stay, she's not doing you a favor. But anytime someone leaves your company because they don't believe in your product, they're, they're doing you a favor. Anytime someone cheats on you, they're doing you a favor. If you have abundance, you understand that. If you have scarcity, then you're sitting there crying because you're like, I can never find another woman like her. If you feel that way, then you don't have enough abundance in your life. And there are ways for men to do that. And the great part about being a man is that 
looks are not that important. There, there's looks are important, but there's so many ways that, for you as a man to become attractive. You can be the, the short fat dude who's incredibly funny and get women or rich or rich or rich or really good looking. That's one of them, but or, you can also be talented or talented. Exactly. There's a ton of things. You can be a leader of men. You can, I've seen some, have you ever seen these girls when you go to the, um, the self-help conferences or whatever. There's these girls that all they do is they come to every single self-help conference and they're always trying to date one of those guys. There's girls that are addicted. They, they just really, they, they're junkies. They're groupies for self-help conferences. There's all kinds well, of things you can do. That's because you're a celebrity in that world and it's yes. the same, same effect. Yes, you've seen, I've, I know a ton of girls that are, that are in that. They end up- Fame will get you laid more than anything. Okay, so, but fame, but the most important thing that you said is that fame can overcome the fact that you might not be that good looking. And so there's also another thing that didn't exist when you and I were growing up is this mid-tier level of fame when you were when I, and I were growing up it was you know you had Tom Cruise who was incredibly famous and then you had like the janitor at the high school who had no fame whatsoever and there was like no in between you were famous because Vogue made you famous the Hollywood industrial complex made you famous you were famous because you were in a movie or a television show or because you were a politician that's what made you famous now there's this mid-tier fame where you're like a streamer who has 400,000 subs on Twitch like me Right, exactly. You you are a great example. Like on the scale well, between, so are you? Yeah, exactly. On the scale between you to the rock, you're famous. Yeah, mid-tier famous. On the scale between the rock and like absolutely nobody knowing who you are, you and I are probably like a three or a four. We're, only to some people, though. Only, oh, but but it's enough to where you will have a woman to date for the rest of your life every single night of the week if you wanted to. There's a mid-tier level. You think of it's fame. because of the following? Uh, well, it definitely helps because you you can scale your. Just so like what you if scale, someone buys two million fake followers? Well, well that, that that's not going to help. But just like you, like Speed VT, just how you use social media in order to scale your engagement and your reach, you do the exact same thing for dating. And so you, you would just be able to do the same thing. I just teach men how to do that, but you don't need a hundred thousand followers. Maybe 5,000 is enough, but if you have 5,000 followers and half of them are women, you will have a, a woman to date seven days a week. If that's what you want to do. Are you eventually going to be married and stop all this? Tom um, I'm still gonna, I, I think I would still teach certain ideas, but if I was married, I definitely am going to probably change the marketing. Uh, and also at some point, I mean, we went, when, when I came on the show last time, I think we had 400 clients, we're at 1500 now. Uh, and then we're doing close to 800,000 a month in revenue. Uh, we were doing maybe 200,000 the last time I came on here. Well, I, I need a commission. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We'll give you a, an affiliate code. You'll get definitely get a commission. Um, but the thing that I found is that, um, uh, I want to probably am going to teach how we, we started from a business. We started with $1,500 and turned it into something as big as it is. We're getting to a point where we're at eight figures. I want to, I want to teach people how to do that at some point. So it's going to be, and that point may be when I'm married with kids. That might be the, the next thing that I, that I teach. It's always something that you've done. Then go back and teach people how you did it. If you, Alex Hormozzi's books are so terrific, but they're not terrific because he doesn't say this is the only way to do things. He describes to you how he did things. One of my favorite ones is, have you ever heard when he talks about, he hires a marketing agency to do his marketing and then he hires another one to train him. And then eventually when he learns how to do all that stuff, he fires the other marketing agency. This is genius shit that Alex Hormozzi came up with. It's really great stuff, but he's still an expert. Even though he doesn't have a PhD in marketing, he exits at his company at $115 million. So we need, we're listening to him because he did it right this way. That's enough expertise. Well, and he's a smart son of a bitch. Of course, he's incredibly smart. So that's the, that's the reason why we listen to him though. It do, he doesn't have all the answers, but he has one fucking answer that you know works. And so that's why you listen to him. Same thing with Russell Brunson. Same thing with uh, Dan Martell. Same thing with any, same thing with Tim Ferriss. They at least have one way that you know for a fact works. It doesn't mean there's no other way that works. Well, again, if I bet you Dan... Bilzerian has had way more chicks than any of them. Yes. Now, if you ask those guys, they'd say, so? Yeah. But at the end of the day, dude, I think you're, in some cases, always insecure in some areas. Sure. Because again, dude, Dan, dude, I read his book. Yeah. That dude's been freaking hammering hotties for a long time. Yeah. And he's he's got a badass lifestyle. If you're a... If you like that single lifestyle. Yeah. Cause again, dude, like I, I would miss my girls and I'd miss my, my family and I'd miss that. <laughs> Dan doesn't seem to care about well, that. Well, he, he does have some monogamous relationships that he's in for short periods of time. He tried, he's tried to do it a few times. But he don't but, like it. Yes. Well, the other issue is Dan is an admitted sex addict. So like, that's part of the I wish I was. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know that we're not all sex. Addict. I think if you have a testosterone level over 800, you're a sex addict. I, I have one over 800. You do. I know. Cause but, TRT. I, but I am not a sex addict. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's different for different people. Addict is a strong word. It to is me. a strong word. Yeah, it's not to me. It's like you know, huh? someone says, you know, 
how, how many times should a married couple have sex? I said, I don't know, two, three times a month. They're like, a month? Yeah. I'm like, why would you want to do it any more than that? Yeah, my, my there's no way my girlfriend and I are going to make it at two or three times a month, though. That's, so it's, I think it's different for you. Well, then people. maybe you're an addict. Maybe she's an addict. Uh, I think we could both be addicts for each other. Well, I can tell you what, you know how sometimes, you know, if you're an addict, it's not good if you're with an addict because you'll never break it. Yeah. Who said, I, and I said this the other day, and I got a lot of flack. What's wrong with being a sex addict? Like, so you're not harming anybody. You're just having a lot of sex. Like yeah. that's, that's, that's good. Like shit. Yeah. But no, apparently having an, an addiction to sex could harm you. How? Yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like it's some progressive woke cope shit to Might call be. someone a sex addict. I, yeah, really, I mean, you fuck a lot. Big really deal. never had like the thing is the thing with Dan is that he had a sex with a lot of women cause he could. And there's a lot of other men that wishes they could have sex with as many women as Dan did. They just can't. So I, I don't just prefer one I, 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 not I, at a time. Yes. One. Yes. I just want one I, girl. I prefer giving my attention to one. I've done both. And but, I will tell you, giving my attention to one woman and spoiling her and seeing the happy look on her face. And is, safety. Is, is, yes. Safety is another big one. Yeah. Dude, you go out and start sleeping with girls, bro. You could get gone on her Pacifilates Hot real quick. Pacifilates. Yeah. You know, and, and if you do the shit I do, you're going to get something transmitted. Yeah. Because if, if you do the shit that you do, that Brad does. Yeah. In other words, like you, if you do the shit I do, you're exchanging fluids, brother, yeah. no <laughs> matter what. Okay. At the end of the day, I'm getting something if I'm doing something. Yeah. Okay. There's no, I did it cleanly. No, 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 no. There, there, we're getting something. We're yeah. exchanging fluids. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm worried about that. I'm, I, you know, I, 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 I think I'm, I connect like I, I, I need a little connection. Now, again, I'm not a fucking angel. No, I don't. If someone goes, blah, 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 and I was single, I do not. Yes. But if I'm with this person and this person is throwing it at me, I do not accept. Now, would it be harder in some cases, yes. depending on who it was? Absolutely. Got to be honest. And I'm sure it would be for my wife too, but it's called respect, integrity, and ethics. We made a deal. We're not doing it. Yeah. Now, if I went home and I found out, oh, that bitch fucking cheated. I don't think I'll ever get married again. And I'm never making that deal with anybody. Yeah. Ever again. I think that, but I'll bet you anything. If her and I got divorced, I'll come hang out with you for a month <laughs> and I'll be fucking hooked up again in no time. Uh, no time. So that, I, I prefer, I prefer one. Yes. But also here's the thing. It's not what I described before was being around a lot of women, but m like I have a, my girlfriend is from Southwest Arkansas. She's a really good girl. And when, when I, when I found her, like a lot of my clients were like, that's, it was a miracle for you to find someone like that. And I was like, no, the trick for you as a man is to be attractive to all women or a, a large majority of women to do the things that put you in that middle standard deviation so that you can eventually find that one girl, but you don't start out. This is a big problem. I see a lot of guys have is they come from like a structured family environment where they're, the mom wants them to marry a certain type of girl. Guys will do things to, to try to have what's called good guy status good guy. You see this often guys will in, in, in the bet in, in private, they will be a whore. And in public, they'll act like they're just like looking to get married. They'll do these things for like good guy status. And the thing is that doesn't work. There's no such thing as good guy status or bad guy status. When it comes to women, women are a try, you know, as well as I do guys who are scoundrels who end up dating incredible women. It happens all the time. Women are attracted to certain traits in men, whether or not they're good or bad. And so I have a lot of clients often they'll be like, they're trying to do things like, Oh, Michael, I don't like this whole thing because it's going to ruin in my reputation. No, dude, you have an incredible wife who loves you and you were a player at one point. It doesn't ruin your reputation as a man because there is no good guy status or bad guy status. Status is status is status. It doesn't matter, matter what you do. So that's the thing that I've learned. It's like, again, if you and I were trying to get in front of a venture capitalist versus Logan Paul trying to get in front of a venture capitalist, he's going to get in front of it before us because he's more famous than we are. It's just a matter of fact. It doesn't mean he knows more about venture capital than us. He's just more famous. If Michael Jordan tried to get a bill passed in Congress, he's going to do a better job than, than you and I are because he's just more famous than us. He's not Congress famous or venture capital famous. It's just, there's more status and less status. That's pretty much all there is. It's a sad commentary on life, but there's a reason why all these people, probably the most money Mike Tyson will ever make in a fight is not when he fought Michael Spinks. It's not going to be fought when he fought Lennox Lewis. The most money he'll ever make in any fight he'll ever make in his career is when he fights Jake Paul. What do you think about Andrew Tate? 
Uh, Andrew is is great. I mean, I actually like a lot of the stuff that he has to say. I've, I've spoken to him. You've also spoken to him a, a couple of times. I think a lot of things he says are misunderstood. And if there's anything he says that I disagree with, I don't discount him as a human being. I have a very difficult time understanding how Romania seems to want to charge him, but can't proceed with a trial on him. The longer this goes, the more I actually believe him. Uh, well, I believe believed him from day one because, yeah. because I mean, at the end of the day, dude, he would have been locked up. Exactly. I mean, I, when they got evidence on you, they lock you up. Exactly. End of story. But, but so, but, so, but that's not what I'm talking about. Like uh, to me, that's old news. Yeah. Like just, he ain't the best looking dude in the world. Right. He gets a lot of chicks though. Do you think it's his money or do you think the fact that he's fucking, you know, like confident? Do you think it's the fact that he fucking has uh, four world titles? What is it about I, him? I don't think the girls care about the four world titles. I think he, I think the issue is he's probably the most charismatic, confident speaker we have today. Like, I think he became more famous faster than anyone I can remember in the history of the world. Well, you must admire that of the way course. he speaks because I would disagree that he's the most fucking, what'd you call it? I think he's extremely, uh, he's an effective speaker. Yes. I think he's probably. I do of too. Articulate, but you just gave him like fucking the highest esteemed. Yeah. The, the problem. The problem is even Barack Obama did not get audiences like he did for the period of time before he was kicked off Trist, of social media. Tristan's an equally good speaker. Tristan, Tristan's really good too, and it's more articulate. Well, here's the thing with Tristan. Tristan is not trying to be quite as bombastic as as Andrew. They're not quite the same person. Tristan is. Tristan is very much like. It's much less judgmental. It's very different the way Tristan works. Tristan is smokes cigars, drinks alcohol. He's a you know he's a Christian, but he like he he manages OnlyFans models still stuff like that. Does uh, he really? Yeah. Uh, Andrew has converted to Islam. He's he's taken a very different tact. He doesn't drink. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't do any of those things. And his 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 opinions tend to be a little bit more divisive than Tristan's. The thing with Andrew though is he speaks in a way to where even if you don't like him, you're going to sit there and listen to him. And he's I'm I'm very like I'm a public speaker and I can tell when someone's better than me. He's better than me. He's really really good. He has and good so, words. He does. He does. And w my point is the proof is in the pudding. He became more famous faster than any human who That's ever fact. in the planet. In August of two, 2022 or 2023. 2022, he was the most googled human on earth. More so than Donald Trump. More so, and Donald Trump, his fame, that's 40, 40 years to become famous. For yeah, Andrew Tate, dude, it was a year and a half. I, if I look up the email he sent me to yeah. ask me to be on this podcast, yeah. I'll bet you it wasn't much earlier. Again, and, and same, I didn't even thing. know who he was, number one. Number two, when I looked him up, you know, I was thinking, I said yes, only because, yeah. you know, he's a kickboxer. That's cool. And, yeah. you know, he seemed cool. He was funny because I seen him talking shit to people online. I don't know if it was that Aiden kid or Dude, the, the Tom Segura interview is the one that got me. I was like, I definitely want this guy on for sure. I was the same thing when I met him. He I had, don't even know who Tom Segura is. He's a comedian. And it, it was one of the first interviews that, that he did that made him pretty viral. And the other one was when he went on fresh and fit. Um, so I didn't see those. He emailed me. I had no idea who it was. Yeah, I Googled me, me them. Too. They may have been the videos I'm watching. Yeah. I just wasn't, I didn't know that was yeah. that, but I see the guy and he's arguing into a computer at his house, which looked like a condo. I didn't know he had money either. It's a, it's a studio in Romania at his at his house in Bucharest. Yeah, so he was arguing with basically kids online. Yeah, and I and I and I thought, oh, this will be fucking fun. So I flipped him to to Maria, like, yeah, she'll schedule. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, he Andrew Tate, and I'm like. It wasn't that fucking Andrew Tate, was it? Like, it, I put two and two together one day, and I said, let me see if that was him. And I looked it up, and I'm like, dude, I just flung fuck. If I'd have just fucking talked to him yeah, from too. the get-go, we'd be buds. Yeah, um, we there was a point where we were texting, like, almost every day, uh, back and forth. You never got him on? No, I never got him on, because he was going to do it now? Of course, I'd have Andrew on any time he wanted. No, I put him would on. he do it now? Oh, uh, maybe. If I go out to Romania, I think he would. Well, why wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, I, I probably will at some point. I was telling him, yeah. you and I should go out there together. Dude, again, I mean, if he if he invites me out, I talked to Tristan. Yeah. Patrick bet David was there, and I said, tell him, you know, yeah. I'm next. Yeah. And he, Patrick told me, he goes, yeah, they know who you are. They follow you. And, and Andrew does follow me yeah. from his real account. Yeah. And um, they know who I am. And th he said, feel free. Here, Tristan said, give him his number. So I text Tristan, and Tristan said, yeah, when all this is over, we'd be happy to, to do it. S same thing he told me, yeah. But, dude, that was a long time ago. Still, like, they got 10 times more famous since then. Yes. So I'm trying to think, like, are they just, am I too small of a fish now? Um, I, I ask myself that question all the time, but not just with that. I ask for, like, like you know, Chris Williamson's not asking me to come on his show. Like, there's there's that issue. Uh, Alex Hermosi, I've reached out to him several times. He doesn't want to come on. But Alex, is, I've heard, is kind of difficult to get a hold of at this point. Um, Alex, Alex flipped a little bit. 
Because he was yeah. on my show a couple times. He yeah. spoke at my event. He don't speak at events. He doesn't want to be associated with, yeah. with the guru space. Yeah. He he almost he almost went like dark. Yeah. And when you have a hundred million liquid, who cares? Exactly. So I think that was something odd about him. But dude, if you can get Andrew Tate on your show. I would get him on your show. Yeah, of course. I would, I would definitely want to do that. I think what will probably happen is I'd have to plan a trip out to Romania and go with some other guy. Maybe me, Ty, Why would you, you have to go with someone else? I'll go. Yeah, th- because I, I would want us all to do like maybe a, a, a group panel when he does the emergency meeting stuff that he does oh, in his house. not me. I want fucking... No, we would, do, we would do one-on-one, but like the thing about the way content works now, like if you watch Aiden Ross, like Aiden is going to, he's going to do a live stream and another live stream and have this guy on and do this panel show and whatever. That's how the biggest streamers are doing now. Like even when you watch Andrew when, when, with Tate Speech, like he goes all, he goes live on Tate Speech on Rumble. Uh, where, every day. Is the, where are these Rumble? Yeah. Because I Rumble. always see the videos from them, but I never see them. Yeah. Yeah. Because like when they, he was talking to King Ryan or, uh, you know, the fighter, Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Where is that? It's on when Rumble. is this happening? I'm missing it all. Yeah, it's on Rumble. He's, I'm, I'm say, he's, he's on Rumble. If you go on Rumble and look up Tate's speech right now, you can see him. He goes on like every couple days. And he's live. He's always live. So yeah. when he's going, you're watching him in Romania or wherever he's at. Doing That's true. It. Yeah. And then people still make clips of it. And those clips he uses for, you know, different things, you know, for popularity, but also to get people into the real world and to get people into um, um, the war room. Do you think, uh, do you think... Y- y- Anyone could ever pull off what he did again? No, uh, the social. So I, I actually talked to an executive at Instagram about this specifically. I won't say who it is, but we had this conversation. I was like, well, like the Ayatollah of Iran says more heinous shit about women than Andrew Tate. Like, why the fuck does he have a Twitter and Andrew Tate doesn't? And the answer was because Andrew Tate was more popular. It, like literally the, again, I, if I, if I, if you or I had relationships with six women at the same time, New York magazine's not writing an article about us, but Andrew Huberman is one of the biggest podcasters in the world. So they're clout jacking him. They're swagger jacking him. This is a situation where he made TikTok look like a fool, like Andrew did, because he's like, I got more engagement than anyone else. And I did so without paying you any money. I did so because of my, the affiliate thing that he did. And so they shut that whole thing down because he was having, he was having like, like Andrew, if they don't take him off those platforms, platforms, he sways elections. Do you understand that? He legitimately sways elections with his, his persona. And that was too much for people who do not have the same political beliefs that Andrew Tate have, i.e. big tech. They didn't want that. And then when, when Elon Musk buys Twitter, he gives Andrew Tate his, his account back. It's one of the first things he does. So, I mean, I, I understand like people find some do you of the think things. Bil- do you think Tate's a billionaire? I don't know if he's a billionaire. He, I don't know. He's claiming it. Is he? I, I could, could be realistic. Yeah. He could be though. I mean, you don't know what kind of properties he owns. You don't know about the appreciation of those properties. Yeah. You have no idea. I wonder. I, I mean, I could care less. I hope he is. I, I hope everyone becomes a billionaire someday and yeah. it's not as cool as it is today. I hope, I hope the state, I hope the country of Romania either goes through with their prosecution and then gets a bunch of fucking egg on their face when people figure out that everything they made up was completely conjecture. And I, I, my, my uh, issue would already is, be hammered, bro. My, my, my issue with this is my biggest issue is people who don't like Andrew Tate, who need him to be guilty. I have a huge problem with that. Like, oh, well, like what you need, you want these allegations to be correct. That's sick. If you want them to be correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, like I'm, I do not have any problem with people having an open mind initially when the charges were filed. We're two years in guys. Where's the fucking prosecution? Where is the case? This is one of the things I know he doesn't particularly care care for the United States, but in the U S you got 72 hours to charge me, not six months, not six months where you can charge me while you're doing an investigation. And absolutely unbelievable. And then the majority of that time he's incarcerated. So it's, you know, it's much diff- more difficult. But he's not to, now. He's not now, but it's much more difficult to mount a defense when you can only see your lawyer at certain times in jail than it is for you to mount a defense from home. It just is. It's just a matter of fact. Well, and you, so, you, you, you know, I'll tell you, you shouldn't even have to mount a defense. Yeah. They should have to mount an offense. Yes. Yeah. I'm on the record saying I don't think he's guilty. Yeah, I don't. Uh, the preponderance of evidence would indicate to me he's not guilty. Just, just like you know, when someone says, you know, well, what about like you know, Epstein's list? Yeah. You know, why won't they release it? Because the people that are on it are in control of releasing it. Of course. Yeah. And the answer is no. I yeah. wouldn't release it either. And yeah. guess what? I would kill people so it would not ever be revealed. Yeah, it, it makes sense to me too. I, you know what? Some of the things is um, that was a really interesting 
thing with the Epstein list because like even let's just say hypothetically someone went there and didn't participate in any of the antics which is possible yeah you're still on the list and it's you're screwed if you're on the list well again you're you're hurt i wouldn't say you're screwed because yeah. you know richard branson supposedly affiliated with but he also has islands out there i know so but it seems reasonable but it doesn't matter he's yeah. on the list yeah so i've been on his island yeah so now i'm on that list you're on the Necker Island list. Yeah. Yes. So if somebody said, oh, you're a pervert because you've been on Necker Island. Yeah. Dude, that's not true. Yeah. Number one, Richard Branson, because I got to meet him and play chess with him and hang out, watch him hang out. He seemed like a great dude. Not yeah. that he is one, but he seemed like a great, nice, down to earth, humble guy. But I was on his island. My name's on an island and I'm no perv and yeah. I'm no freaking bad guy. Yeah. So I guarantee you there could have been people that flew to Epstein's Island and didn't get involved in anything. And if you're one of those people, you're just as desirous of that list to not get released. And I think that's another issue. I here. don't want that list release of my name's on yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. Because correct. dude, I would be damaged. Isn't that crazy? That it, is, it, 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 but that explains how Epstein was so powerful, but, but that also explains how like, you know, the elite operate. Yes. Because dude, there are people that are above the law. We consider though, when, when we see the way we work, like little P. Diddy's latent homosexuality or me Camille or whatever. But, these, but again, who's saying that MSA or the MSM? But, oh, I mean, there's, why are we so people. quick to believe it? Oh, I don't, I don't know if it's true or not. My point is if it is true uh, or even the thing with Andrew, oh, Andrew Huberman, the thing is like, let's just be above board and tell the truth. Like, because at this point you can't really hide anything. You can't, you can't hide it. P people don't care about NDAs anymore. It doesn't make any, we, we elected a guy president who fucked a porn star while his wife was pregnant. We don't care anymore. It's better to just tell the truth. I think at this point, that's, that's true. That's, that's the only thing we have now is just to tell the truth because it's like, I want you to consider this Meek Mill and P Diddy, if they are gay and I'm, there's a lot of, what do you mean? If, yeah, exactly. If, if, if there's a lot if, of evidence to show that they are, but if they are gay, <clears throat> The, th the idea would be, well, you're a gangster rapper and you being gay is going to hurt your sales. Really? Did it hurt little Nas X when he had a bigger record than either one of you and isn't, he's openly gay? Isn't, no. isn't Orlando Brown openly gay? I have no idea. I don't know. I don't. I can't keep up well, with Because that names. guy admitted that he did shit to do yeah, shit. So, so my, point, my point is this. It's better to just, we don't have a problem. I think in this country, we still have a problem with people who pretend to be straight and are gay, but we don't have a problem with gay people. I really don't think we have a problem with gay people at all in this country. We have gay well, mayors. Depends on who you say we. There's some. There's some. Of course, I'm sure in, in places in, in rural Mississippi and Alabama they still do. But I'm in general. No. Like, like if you were gonna, if somebody, nobody cares. If somebody completely aligned with your values and beliefs and was a conservative, a political candidate, and but he was gay, you'd probably still vote for him. I, I don't care if they're gay I don't gay care at all either. Yeah, exactly. That's not the issue. I think the issue is... And it is, depends on your definition because nowadays, dude, it's not gay unless your balls touch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. I've never touched balls, so I don't know. That's why I don't well, like orgies. Well, then you're not gay. I don't like orgies because there's dudes involved. There's other guys involved. Yeah. Dude, listen. The world is going down a fucking slippery slope. Yeah. The West especially because yeah. that's where I'm at and that's what I know I see. Yeah. You know, you go out to another country, sex, promiscuid, per, promiscuity, promiscuity, it's not as l frowned upon as some cultures. Yeah. But in general, the world is going down a toilet. We are not headed in the right direction. It's about morality. Morality. Yeah. Okay. I'm talking about morality. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, incredible levels of stimulus that we are allowed to receive every day mainly because of the internet, what it's done, there's a, there's an anthropologist named Dunbar and he had Dunbar's number is basically the idea that 150 people is about the size of the tribe that you would have been in an ancestral period. And if you look now, most military units are about 150 people. And the reason why is because that's about the number of faces you can remember in your active memory, about 150, uh, 115, somewhere in that area. And we've, we're not, we're maladapted for being able to see a thousand faces a day, which you do on your explore page when you're going through Instagram. So this is an evolutionary mismatch. And because of that, you start seeing people want better and more. They're tired of what they have, which causes things like a lack of gratitude and higher promiscuity. That's what happens. It's just an evolutionary mismatch. We were not designed for this level of stimulus that we receive on a regular basis. This is how you end up with 18 year old kids with erectile dysfunction from a porn addiction. That can See, only I don't believe that. What do you mean? I do not believe it. What do you mean? Which part? That they're 18 year olds with, with erectile oh, dysfunction. I, I, it, it, I, I've from heard a reports porn of addiction. It. I think it's from the food that we are being Could be. fed. Okay. 
It's, it's, dude, it's not from a porn addiction. Porn is still not good for you. Again, I don't agree with that. You think, okay. It's stimulus. I think it, you, it's, it sets your dopamine levels dude, so stimulus. high that it's really hard to recover from. Again, recover I'm, from I'm trusting what? Andrew Huberman for this one. But again, recover from what? So, so uh, again, if you... Dude, you see people having sex, you're going to get fucking a boner. Okay, but, but consider this. You probably eat better food now than you did in your 20s. And you, but you probably better, better like quality or better quality food. I was eating fucking Wendy's when I was a teenager. Every yeah, day, I okay? didn't know it was garbage. Yeah, I didn't know it was garbage, right? But at the time, if you had taken me to a steakhouse, I'd actually probably preferred McDonald's French fries. For over sure. time, over time, the dopamine hits that I get for better and better food start to decrease because uh, because it, you just can't get any more dopamine. You're just used to doing the best shit all the time. Every night's a five star restaurant. Every car you have is a fucking. But what is that? Then you think that's a problem? Uh, it, well, no. What I'm saying is that eventually you get to a point where you lose gratitude with porn. It is un. It's non contextualized images of sexual intercourse and it's limitless and it causes the man to then look at his reality. There's studies that show that as men watch more porn, they find they, they, when they serve them about their partners, those men tend to find their partners to be more and more lacking. That's a problem be, be, because they see what's available and what's happening what's and I'm not getting it. They see what's possible. Not, it's not available to them unless but, you live in Vegas. It's but, not but, but all I'm saying is I don't, again, I'm not saying I, I don't know what I do not believe is that 18 year olds are having elect elect, uh, erectile erect erectile just, just google it. If, you, if you don't believe, i can't even say it if you, you know if i you, don't have it if you don't believe it that's fine but that's one of the points you know I why using. i don't say it though why because dude it's the food it could be i think the food could be a contributor do to some it. why don't you do some research it seems like whenever i talk to you dude once you decide on whatever it is you're oh, gonna no, no, fucking I did believe research about food i agree with you totally i think food the food i think the part of the reason why andrew huberman got grilled was because he was telling people to eat healthy if you look at all the people who criticize andrew huberman notice how they all have jiggly necks they're all overweight andrew huberman told you to get on a fucking treadmill and stop drinking alcohol and people are criticized this guy's a quack no 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 Nobody said he was a quack. Even the New York Magazine didn't say he was a quack. They said he fucked a lot of women. That nobody Huberman? said. Yeah, Huberman. Even Stanford came up and stood stood behind him and said, "No, this lab is legitimate." And if you go look into listen to this, listen, I have an aura ring on right now because of Andrew Huberman. Because I do cold plunges, I do intermittent fasting, all the different things he talks about. I get sunlight in my eyes when I wake up, and I try to get really. What great if he sleep. told you to do urine therapy? I would. I would need to see the studies. And then you'd do it. I would need to see the studies. And then you would I'd do it. I need a lot of studies for urine therapy. That would be that would take a while. I need to see a lot of studies. I will tell you the cold plunge thing is life changing. The, most, the best thing I've done in the, the last the, year. The good thing about you, dude, is once you've given someone your vote of confidence, you're a loyal dude. Yes, for sure. Now I don't. Uh, when I listen to Andrew Huberman's points, I, I, you know they don't sound preposterous, and yeah. I didn't know he had a bunch of haters. Yeah, I thought everyone loved his shit. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I think it's probably the algorithm we get. But if you look up look up the criticism of Andrew Huberman, it's well, you're never, not you're not going to get one person in the world that everybody loves. Of course. Of so, so when, when like I, I didn't know 18 year olds were having ED from porn addiction and again, bullshit, just I like think, they've landed on the fucking moon. Okay. So they did land on the moon. Bullshit. Yes. And I say bullshit. You to had the, specific questions. The main we, we reason for, for like the, for the erectile defunction has got to be the food. The, the, the contaminants yes. in our fucking environment, the food, the poisons, the toxins, the consistent poisoning yeah. of our freaking food for the sake of profit. Yeah. Agreed. And that might be why 18 year olds are now having have you seen, erections, have, but they're blaming porn. It ain't porn. There was porn back then. Have you, have you seen the videos of people in the 1930s? They would show the boardwalk in New Jersey and these people were walking around and there was not a single obese person. Not one. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's like New York city in the middle of the day and everyone's lean, but dude, you don't, you don't remember porn as a kid. Uh, it was different when you and I were a kid, different. there was a fucking uh, box that you had, you hit out in the woods, you know what I'm saying? With some, with like, uh, Frederick's of Hollywood in it. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what, what is there now? Like now it's like high speed fucking VR porn and like devices that move not for unless you. you're looking at it. Because again, dude, if I'm ever interested in looking at porn, it's to fucking get a fucking, get it going. Yeah. You know, Hey, let's get fucking so horny. We're not talking about porn, in general, I, porn addiction. Yeah. There's a difference. I know, but like, I'm not looking at like, you know, let me see somebody getting fucked in the ear. You yeah. know, I'm like, I'm like, it's just, it's just people having sex. Yeah. So it was, it, it existed then, but you yeah. just had to slide it into a VCR. So, so I think there was porn then and there's porn now. And yeah. yes, there may, it may be easier to get, but in my opinion, I don't think 
any erectile dysfunction from teenagers is happening because too much porn. I think it's happening from the chemicals and the shit and the food, and they're blaming the porn. Maybe. Leave the porn alone. Not that there's no porn addiction. If you have a problem with porn, I'm sure there is. If it's desensitizing you to to live in reality, well, then I'm saying not that. That may be a fact. But an 18-year-old kid can't get wood anymore because of porn? No way. With a regular girl. Not, no, he can still get wood with porn. He just can't get it with a regular girl. That's what I'm talking about. That, there's been studies that show that. There be people that are talking about You love about these studies. I do. Do you I know do. that there's been a study on studies and it, it says that 92% of people that believe in studies <laughs> are full of shit? Did you yeah, know that? I, this, it's 98% actually. That's what I heard. Yeah. So you're one of those. Yeah, I do. I like, I like, I, I, studies are not perfect, but I want a more accurate description of the world so that I can move, move forward. Right. You're talking about before, um, uh, one of the things that we do, like these aren't studies, but like when, whenever I have a sale meeting with my executive team, we ask ourselves sometimes, what would Brad do? What would Wes Watson do? What would Dan Fleischman do? We ask ourselves, what would Ryan Stuman do? What would, uh, Ty Lopez do? Uh, we uh, uh, f- frequently we're talking, what would Cody Sanchez do? What would Alex Hermosi do? And we, you see these things and like they, you see the proof in what they do and you take that evidence and you bring it back and you can have success. Evolutionary psychology, which is something that I, I try to study. That's one of the things, it's not a perfect science. It has to do with, you know, natural selection, dealing with the brain. But the reason it, but the thing is at some point I have to go talk to the girl. At some point I have to get married. At some point I need a partner. At some point I'm, I'm desirous of the opposite sex. And so even though the information isn't perfect, I still want to go and take action, but I want as good informa- as good of information as I can, which is why I like study so much. Mm. Well, it's interesting stuff, man. I could be talking to you guys for a thousand years about topics that, you know, branch off into a million things and people go, what was that episode about this one? I was trying to, I was trying to pick your brain on if I'm out there and I'm a freaking regular Joe blow and I can't get chicks, what should I do? Yeah. I have a ton of female it, friends. Fix your social it, media. Yeah. But now we're out of shape. You did, you did cover some, but yeah. because we're out of time, I'd say now just go join men of action. Yeah. You know, the, he, you have what eight week courses 10 what, what is your deal so uh we do uh, we have a six month course a year-long course and a year-long unlimited course we also have a free course on our school server school doc the the, the th- new thing that alex hermosi is part of school yeah uh, i would i wouldn't promote that but go ahead uh, I, I, it's fine but i, I, I would I, the they don't even know how to spell school Here, here's the thing i'm it, joking yeah here's the thing um uh if you're if you're totally financially unviable but this is for the broke boys you got a free course yeah i have a free course please go to school.com uh, forward slash men of action free uh, or hit me up on instagram and i'll send it to you by the way it's sk sk oh yeah for sure and then if you guys want if you actually you know want to invest in yourself and by the way it's night and day and i'm sure you've seen this too the more people invest in themselves the better returns they get you've bought coaching or at least you bought coaching for your sales team ever we've all bought coaching it's so funny because if you think ty lopez or any of these guys are a scam ask ty lopez what he spends his money on so ty spends a hundred grand a year on coaching from other people if he if he thinks it's a scam then why is he buying coaching from other people you see what i'm saying it's it's so funny because i Do people think it's a scam yeah a lot of people think all these the, this guru spaces they're, they're, they're all scams but why are we're the ones buying coaching as well you know, when you listen to guys who, who buy Cole Gordon's course or Jeremy Miner's course or anything like that, it's because we know that this stuff helps. The more we have invested in ourselves at Men of Action, the better we've gotten. And we're trying to find somebody to either replace or improve every single aspect of what we're doing. Dan Martell, one of the greatest books I've ever read, uh, uh, Buy Back Your Time. He goes over this concept and it's just, it's really, really fantastic. So like, that's what I recommend people do is just find evidence so that you can find some way to improve yourself when it comes to leadership, when it comes to communication, when it comes to networking, when it comes to dating. And we'll put the links down below. Where do they find you on social media? I'll just go to Michael Sartain anywhere on Twitter. It's uh, Sartain podcast everywhere else. It's Michael Sartain. If you find me there and send me a message, I'll, I'll give you access to it. Go to MOA mentoring.com. If you really do, or if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this, uh, go to MOA mentoring.com. You can see we have over 100 testimonials. We have a bunch of Instagram testimonials. And here's the thing I want you to do. Whatever your limiting belief is. Hey, Michael, I can't get money uh, girls because I'm too broke. I'm too old. I'm too fat because I'm Indian, because I'm Asian, because I'm a black guy and I only like white girls. Whatever your limiting belief is, come to us and we'll give you 50 examples of where your limiting belief did not stop someone else. That's the thing I'll tell you to do. Folks, as always, till next time. Keep that shit real.